Hello and welcome. My name is Harvey Olivia, clinical instructor for Carrington College. On the video camera, we have the respiratory guy, Mr. Houston. And Greetings, everyone. Today we're going to do our competency for intubation. So like anything else, we want to make sure that we have a doctor's order. So once we check our order and we have an order for um, intubation, we go ahead and do our PPE. So we observe any of the standard precautions that we might have to do. We're going to gather our equipment. So I have all my equipment here and around me. So the first thing you're going to make sure is you have an oxygen flow meter. You're going to want to make sure you have a um, manual resuscitator, ambu bag with the mask. Um, I've also attached a peep valve to that. And then you want to have uh, the patient on something. So our patient's currently on a non-rebreather. Um, but you want to have something going for the patient to kind of hyperoxygenate the patient. Um, you also want to have laryngoscope. So um, this is my laryngoscope. You want to have different size blades. So this one is um, curved and this one happens to be a Mac 3. You want to make sure that it works. You see the light come on. Now for demonstration purposes, I do have a Miller. So we do have different blades. Um, I have my ET tube. This is a size 7. Um, I have my entitle uh, detector. So this is in the bag. I haven't opened it yet. You have a 10 cc syringe. I have airways like in, um, OPA and NPA. There's a few different sizes there. I have my stylet. I have a neck roll in case I need to uh, support the neck or I can intubate. I have my suction. I have a stylet. And then um, anything else you think you might need, you just want to make sure you have it at the bedside. So if you want different size ET tubes, just make sure you have that. If you want additional stylets, make sure you have that. So I have my intubation box here in case I was to need anything else, I would make sure that I have that. You also want to make sure if you protect your eyes, so you may need to get um, goggles or like a face shield. And then once we're ready, we're gonna go ahead and check our equipment. So right now, I have my patient running on the non-rebreather. I'm gonna hyper-oxygenate him. Um, in an emergency situation, you may have to have someone helping assist and um, manually ventilating the patient until you're ready to intubate. Uh, you're gonna use a rapid sequence intubation medication. So usually there's typically around three that they might use. One of the most popular ones is ketamine, um, but the doctor will decide which ones they want to use. So the patient will be alert and oriented a lot of the times unless it's emergent. And then once the patient becomes um, asleep, they know that you're ready to do it. So you're gonna go ahead and check your equipment. Make sure you have the light on. Okay, I'm gonna get everything ready. So we have our ET tube here inside the bag. This happens to be a 7.0. And you wanna leave it inside the bag. You don't wanna take it out completely. Just enough so that I can get to the pilot. And then I wanna take my 10 cc syringe and I wanna inflate this to make sure that the pilot uh, is able to inflate the balloon and deflate the cuff. We call it balloon, we call it cuff. You can see it inflate and deflate. Um, you also want to have some water-based lubricant that you can do uh, on the tubing. Unfortunately, I don't have any, so I just want to mention it. This is your stylet. Everyone has their own preference of how they like to do the stylet. You do not want to go past the Murphy's Eye with it. I'm going to demonstrate going past. So you will see come out. If you come past that, you can cause damage. So there is a little, what we call opening here, the Murphy's eye. You don't want to go past that. So you can bend this at the top, and then you can bend the ET tube to whatever design that the person that's intubating is comfortable with. Some like to do a slight curve. Some like to do a hockey stick. Um, I personally like to do a slight curve. You want to have your end title ready, so don't open it until you're ready to intubate. So I typically leave it inside the bag, but I'm going to take it out just to show you. So this will change color once we intubate if we are um, detecting CO2. You also want to have your ET tube holder. And I'm going to go ahead and connect my um, tubing to my... I have another one here that's in the package, my Yonkar. So you want to make sure, I'm not going to turn it on because it's rather loud, but you want to make sure your suction's working and you want to have that here at the head of the bed. Now that I checked all my equipment, I'm going to go ahead and move my bed. 
Now I've taken the headboard off already so that I can lower the bed and just go behind. So I'm gonna pull the bed out, just enough for me to fit in there, okay? And make sure you lock your bed. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and lower the patient's bed, the head of the bed. I'm gonna take my equipment, and you wanna have your ET tube holder and everything uh, close by. I'm gonna tuck this here, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and lower the bed. And sometimes you may need to reposition the patient. You might need to pull them closer to the edge of the bed. Sometimes you may need to use a neck roll. So I do have a neck roll. So here is my holder. Here is my end title. And then now I'm going to take, and I usually leave this as well, the laryngoscope, inside the bag until I'm ready to use it too. And you always want to have it on the left hand side. So everything is here for me to use. I'm going to switch over to my Ambu bag. So we want to make sure that you have the patient um, on something so they can get all the extra oxygen, hyperoxygenate. And then you want to have your Ambu bag ready so that you can give manual breaths if need be and also to confirm placement uh, once you intubate. So this will be on, it will be on 15 liters. You'll have a good seal with the mask, okay? I'm just gonna get behind now. Okay, and a lot of times you'll have an assistant with you that can help do things too. Uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna just show everything myself. You can move the pillow, you can leave it. I'm gonna position the head a little bit. So if the patient had false teeth or dentures, you would take them out. Make sure that you're careful when you go to insert the laryngeus, I mean the ET tube. Make sure that you only spend no more than 15 seconds, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and get everything ready. My patient is sedated. I have my laryngoscope. I have my ET tube, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead, position, take a look. Once I can see the vocal cords, so you're gonna see vocal cords, you're gonna pass the ET tube through the vocal cords, and there's usually some type of marking on there, usually black, and as soon as you're through, you're good. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my stylet out. We're going to always maintain, secure um, the tube with your hand until it's secured with a either tape, holder, or twine so you want to make note of where we're at we are 20 centimeters at the T 22 at the lip you want to get your end title right now and I'm going a little bit slow just so that you guys are seeing everything as I'm doing it but typically this would be done pretty quickly okay I have my ambu bag what I'm gonna see is I'm gonna want to see color change so that should change color it's not going to do it because this is not a real patient, but you would go um, from either purple to yellow or yellow to purple. It's just going to show you a change and that's going to let you know that you're in the right spot. Also, you're going to see chest rise and fall when you bag and you want to bag the patient with the um, ID ratio of one to two and you want to make sure you have good chest rise and fall. So the other thing you're going to want to do, and I'm just going to move this, is you're going to take a stethoscope and you're gonna listen, and as I bag the patient, or if you have your assistant bag, you're gonna get breaths, and you're going to listen to chest um, lung sounds on the right side and the left side. So I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate with my stethoscope. So I would have someone or myself, I wouldn't let go of my tube, but I'm gonna have to just to show you guys. So I would give a big breath, listen, make sure I hear good uh, air movement on the right side and the left. So we wouldn't want to secure the tube yet until we make sure that we listen because if you need to make um, any adjustments, let's say your tube is a little bit too uh, much on the right side, you would have to pull it back a little bit. So once I'm happy with placement, I'm gonna go ahead and take the end title off. I've inflated my cuff. Now I'm going to secure the tube. So there's various types of 
devices that you can use to secure the tube. This happens to be one of um, the ones I like to use. So this one, you want to make sure that the little spiky parts on there line up with the tube. Then you're going to take this and wrap it around. It's got like a little snapping mechanism here. Once this adhesive is on the patient's cheeks, it'll warm up and stick better. My mannequin is cold to the touch and this adhesive is not going to warm up. But just for demonstration purposes, to simulate this, um, I would have this contact with the patient's cheeks. And you want to kind of adjust this so that it's not exactly on the ear itself. And you want to make sure that it's comfy on the patient. You don't want it too tight or too loose. And then the nice thing about this is you can slide it too. So to prevent any kinds of wounds to the mouth, you can move your tube from right, left, and middle. As we've done this, we're going to make sure the patient's getting good volumes, getting um, adequate breaths. We're going to make sure all the vitals are good. We're going to order a chest x-ray and we're going to clean up our mess. We're going to make sure we document and that's all we have. Thank you very much.